So, what did I pick up this week? Well, if you recall, a few days ago I recorded a video on cleaning brass knobs. That was a little bit of a hint, because they go on this. And what it is, is an Admiral TV from 1948. Uh, this is a notable set, because it's one of the largest Bakelite cabinets ever made. I sometimes uh, see it listed on eBay as the largest. Well, it's not. The largest is actually seen in my video on cleaning Bakelite, and that's a 12-inch set that was the next generation of this set, and I believe that is the largest Bakelite cabinet ever made. Anyways, this one's pretty big anyway, as it is, and it has this very cool diamond pattern in the base. Uh, now, if you may have noticed that there's actually another one sitting over there. That one I got about a year ago, and they look very similar. In fact, the only difference you might notice from the front is that that one has a brass goldish bezel and this one has a white bezel. Well, actually on the back side there's a very distinct difference between the two. So this is the 20X122. Suckers are heavy. And it just has a single chassis up top and down below it's empty. I've just got a, a bezel from another set sitting down there but otherwise it's just a speaker down there. Uh, this other set, however, has two chassis. The main set with the tuner, pitcher tube, high voltage is up top. And down below is the power supply and audio amp and then the speaker. Uh, there's a large umbilical cord connecting the two for the power. And there's an early uh, type of coax running up for the audio. Now, when I picked up this set, the owner thought he'd do me a favor by already plugging it in and turning it on. <laughs> so, I actually know that it sort of works. And I already did take a quick look under the chassis, and it does have some newish components that are dated from the 80s. So, apparently somebody did restore this at some point in the past. However, we couldn't get a picture on it. So, time for a little more troubleshooting. Uh, something else I should mention. The owner of this set was a smoker. This is the first smoker set I've ever gotten. And uh, by that I mean somebody who's actively smoking now. I'm sure a lot of these sets were around smokers 50, 60 years ago. So I didn't notice it so much when I picked it up. But now that I've had it at home for a while, it stinks. So hopefully when I clean this cabinet down, uh, some of that stinkiness will subside. Anyways, uh, I got a set of rabbiters hooked up and I got a Variac and uh, I've actually already had this on a little bit before but uh, I'll power it up again now. And let's see what we can get this puppy to do. If you recall I've mentioned a few times before there is one low power VHF analog station in Chicago on channel 6 that broadcasts light jazz and some still photos of uh, scenes from the city. So I've got this on channel 6. And there we go. So hey, the audio is working really well. This is a pretty uh, Pretty powerful audio amp actually, it's got like a push-pull with the two 6K6s whereas the other set only has a single output tube, like a 6V6 or something like that. I've heard however that the single chassis actually performs better than this dual chassis. Uh, we'll see, because I am still have a little bit of work left to do on that TV and then of course when I get this one running I can run them side by side and see. Anyway, um, so we have no picture so let's try brightness nothing contrast nothing all right so I'm going to turn this off and let's take a look inside another lucky thing this week is if you recall seeing my videos on the uh, GE set uh, I was using a Suncor CR70 to test that picture tube and I had a little homemade adapter well this week on eBay I got a set of adapters for this tester Despite all its flaws, eBay is an amazing place to find bizarre things like this because I don't know where else you'd find it because they certainly don't make this stuff anymore. 
So I'm going to put down the camera for a minute and hook all this stuff up. Okay, so I've got that hooked up on the uh, cathode ray tube there. This is the GE, so this might be a replacement, uh, but uh, yeah, regardless, let's see if it's any good. So, filament set, 6 volts, turn this on, 6.3 volts, shorts on heater cathode, shorts on G1, cut off, and it does warm up for a minute or two. Do have a filament glass, that's always a good sign. And I do have grid control, so that's good. And from the emission. Eh, not so hot. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it should be good enough to get a picture out of it anyways with the brightness turned up. So, let's see what else might be wrong with this. Underneath this cover is where the high voltage is coming from, and generally when there's no pitcher, no glow, and the pitcher tube's good, that's the next issue. There's a screw on here, and that's where the power interlock is to prevent you from poking around when the set's turned on, which is always a good idea, so I'm going to unplug this. Which I already did. <laughs> and uh, I got to take off a couple quarter inch screws and I'll pop this cover off and let's see what's inside. Okay, here we've got the 6BG6 just like in the GE810. That's the horizontal output tube that drives the flyback transformer back here that generates the high voltage. What a flyback is, it's a... Uh, well, it's a transformer with a very low number of primary turns, or I should say a very high ratio of secondary to primary turns. Uh, output on a set like this is around 9,000 volts, I suppose. And uh, this tube here is a high voltage rectifier. And below that, I think in this set, eh, maybe not. Some sets is a capacitor right underneath this tube called a doorknob capacitor that actually filters the rectified high voltage to give a clean DC to the pitcher too. Uh, but what uh, also the, what they sometimes use in, in lieu of that is the pitcher tube itself forms a capacitor between the grounded outer coating and the high voltage, uh, which can filter the high voltage too. I know on the other set, the 20X122, there is a doorknob cap, and when those go bad, those can uh, short out the high voltage. Uh, looks like there's a couple power resistors in here which the 20x122 also does not have so those could also be suspect but let's test the easy things first which is to see if these tubes are any good so let me pop these out get on my tube tester and let's check it out uh, something else here is there's a quarter amp fuse I'm not sure where it's located it might be underneath the chassis what they realized was that uh, you know without fusing this when any of these components fail like that doorknob cap shorts out as a problem with the flyback without a fuse this whole area can really self-destruct you can burn out the tube you can fry the flyback etc so they got smart at some point and put a fuse in here I haven't checked this fuse yet so I'll, t I'll take these tubes out check them and I'll also take out that fuse and see if it's any good if the fuse is bad that's a pretty good indicator that something else might be bad uh, but uh, hey, let's see all the stuff tests out first